The Tiara Club, Princess Katie and the Silver Pony. How do you do? It's lovely to meet you. We're all so glad you're here. Oh, I'm so silly. Maybe you don't know who we are. We're the Princesses Katie, that's me, Charlotte, Emily, Alice, Daisy, and Sophia. And we share the Rosen Dormitory at the Princess Academy, and one day we'll all be the members of the totally fabulous Tiara Club. Just as long as we get mm, enough Tiara points. Of course, do you ever f do you ever feel really tired after a party? Well, we had a wonderful birthday ball here at the can at the academy, but for the next few days it was so hard to get up. Chapter one. I couldn't believe it. The alarm clock was ringing and ringing. I put my pillow over my head and shut my eyes tightly. Woof. The pillow was snatched away, and there was Princess Alice grinning at me. It's no good, she said cheerfully. Fairy G's been twice now, and if we don't get down to breakfast in ten minutes, we'll all get minus TR points, and none of us will ever be members of the TR club. I'm tired, I moaned. Cheer up, Princess Sophia plonked herself down on my bed. It's Friday today, so tomorrow's Saturday, and that's the royal parade. Charlotte and Emily shouted together. Daisy threw her pillow in the air and cheered. And we all have, and we all be wearing our very best dresses. She crowded. I groaned. I crawled out of my bed. Eight minutes, Alice warned me. Do hurry up. Katie, we simply can't have Rosemary eaten by Princess Perfecta and her creepy crew. That did make me hurry. In fact, I totally zoom into my clothes. Princess Perfecta always liked to be the best at everything, and she's a terrible show-off. She, she was here last year, so she should be a sickener and a member of the Tiara Club, but she didn't. Get enough tiara points. So she's back in year one with us, and that's made her me as mean as a snake. At last, at least, that's what Alice's big sister told Alice. As soon as I was dressed, we rushed out of the dormitory and down the wa the winding stairs. We. We were halfway down when Alice stopped. Too suddenly, we almost fell on top of her. Look, she gasped, as and and she pointed out the tower window. We looked, and we gasped too. The most beautiful coach and any of us had ever been was standing by the front steps of the can of the academy. It was shaped like a wonderful pearly seashell, and it was sparkling all over the sunshine. The the seats were covered in softly gleaming white stained cushions and snow white furry rugs, and and heaped everywhere. Six six pile bed ponies had hand 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 dressed with silver bright bright. Bridles and silver reins were in between the shafts, and tiny silver bells tinkled every time they shook their heads. It's magic, I breathe, and we gazed at in absolute re repairs until Sophia said, "Oh no! Look at the time!" We scrabbled into breakfast by the whisker. The dining halls were very long. The The porters were amazingly grand and gracious princesses all along the walls. Our teachers sit at the far end on golden thrones, but we sit on benches at long wooden tables, and we actually eat off china plates. Sophia was so shocked when, when she first arrived, she absolutely never eaten off anything except gold. But Charlotte pointed out the food. Would taste the same, so she didn't make a fuss. 
because we were so late, we had to sit on the end of end table, and were and there were perfect time fluorine. Oh goodness me! Perfect sneered, looking looking at Emily and Daisy's bright nest hair. I can see what kind of wish you'll be making this morning. You'll wish you'll be wishing for a hairbrush. And she and and she and Florine fell about as if she'd made the best joke. Ignore her, Sophia hissed under her breath. But Emily was looking at Perfecta with wide eyes. What do you mean? She asked. What wish? What? Perfecta threw up her hands as if Emily asked, asked her something really stupid. You mean you don't know? She sniggered loudly. It's wish class this morning. She turned to Florine as they got up from the table. Don't you think it's quite extraordinary that Queen Gloriana lets such silly princesses through the door? Chapter two. Just as I was finishing my breakfast, cream. Queen Gloriana came sailing to the dining hall. She's our headmistress. She and she's wonderful, and wonderfully tall and graceful. And she's also a little bit scary, because she expects to be perfect princesses, and sometimes that can be very hard work. I was pleased to see Fairy G stomping in behind her. Fairy G's much more fun. She's the school fairy godmother, and she keeps an eye on all of us. Good morning, my dear young princesses," Queen Gloriana said, and paused while we made made our courtesies. I didn't do do so badly, but. Charlotte wobbled madly, clutched at the table. A butter dish crashed onto the floor, and of course everybody turned and stared. Charlotte blushed bright red, and Perfecta and Florine sniggered. Queen Gloriana went on speaking as if nothing had happened. As as you know, princesses, tomorrow is a world parade, and this year there will be something a little special. Our good friend King Custain, of forever and far away, has been kind enough to present a school with a very beautiful coach. I have decided that the princess who has the most hair points by the end of today will ride in the she sail coach and lead the parade. Immediately, there was a burst of whispering. Imagine riding in a gorgeous coach. Tap tap, Fairy G tapped in a chair. It's time for all first years to go to wish class. Follow me. Wow, Alice whispered in my ear. Do you think we can wish for anything we want? Her eyes were dancing, and I began to feel excited as I followed Sophia and Emily out. Into the long black and white marble corridor that led to the classrooms, Daisy and Charlotte were right behind, and so were Perfecta and Florine. I know someone who needs to wish a courtesy properly. Florine, Florine, spitefully as we hurried after Fairy G. The classroom wasn't at all grand, except for a beautiful sparkly calendar that glittered in the light. And the four tables were just plain wood, and the chairs weren't covered in stain or anything like that. Although they did have soft red velvet cushions. Charlotte, Sophia, Emily, Daisy, Alice, and I imagined to get a table to ourselves. I couldn't help grinning when I saw the other princesses trying to avoid having Perfect and Florine sit with them. Now listen carefully. Fairy G boomed at us. She's very big, and her voice is really loud. You will each have one wish and one only. Think hard, and then write it down. Remember, once it's written down, it can't be changed. She finished in her pocket, brought out a huge alarm clock, and banged it down on it. 
desk. You have five minutes. Began. At once, we could hear murmurings from the other tables. Princess Freya called out, Please, Fairy Tea, are we meant to be thinking of something princessy? Or we can wish for whatever we want. Fairy smiled a mysterious sort of smile. That's for me to know and you to find out. She said, Oh, Freya looked puzzled. Kitten, which for a kitten? Fairy didn't answer. Princess with Princess Perfecta snored loudly. Really? She sniffed. Fancy waiting a kitten. That's right. That's right, Florina agreed. Some princesses are so babyish. I don't see anything wrong with wanting a kitten, I said. I have a sudden idea. A pile a piebald pony's pulling the coach had been pretty, somehow not quite right, and I knew what would be exactly perfect. A silver pony! Ooh. Beside me, Emily's eyes lit up. That's brilliant, Katie, said, Char said Charlotte. Wouldn't it be sweet, sighed Sophia and Daisy. Just imagine, Alice said, a silver pony. We could feed it sugar lumps. Well, I said slowly, it was more thinking up. Time's up, boomed Fairy G. I'm coming, I'm coming around to collect your wishes. Now, we look at each other. So shall we? Charlotte whispered. Shall we wish for a silver pony, one each? Yes, I said much too loudly. I saw Perfecta glare at me. Six silver ponies to pull a she-sail she coach. They'll be gorgeous. And we all scribbled madly, madly as Faraday stumped up to our table. Chapter Chapter 3. Nothing happened. There was no sign of any magic. Fairy G went back to her desk and, and started through the pieces of paper. Hmm, she said, very creative. And now for a tiara points, we sat all sharply. Tiara points? That's right. Fairy G gave us an odd like a smile. Queen Gloriana has asked me to give a hundred tiara points to the princess who has asked for the most thoughtful and unselfish wish. I could feel my eyes popping out of my head. A hundred points! That would mean exactly. Fairy G knew what I was thinking. Me and every other princess is in the class. A hundred points will earn you a place in a seashell coach. But that's not fair, Princess Eglantine was bright red in the face. She was a friend of Perfecta, at least. She was when Perfecta allowed to her be. Not so not fair. I'd never had which were curly blonde hair. I've known that. Have I told you that Fairy G is big? Well, when Eglantine and that, she grew enormous and she looked so scary i would have dived under the table if i hadn't been too frightened to move princess eglantine fairy roared you will take twenty minus tiara points no princess worthy or the name should ever speak the way you have just spoken eglantine cowered in her seat and whispered, Sorry, Fairy G. Oh. Fairy G still looked angry, but she shrank back to her usual size. Let me remind you all that a perfect princess should not ever need to be told to think others before herself. I began to feel nervous. What would Fairy G think about our silver ponies? Would she give, would she give us Minus tiara points, too. Now, Faraday said firmly, it's time to announce the winner. Are you ready? We sat up, folded our hands in our laps, and nodded. I could feel my heart pitter-patting in my chest, even though, I, even though I knew I couldn't possibly win. 
and the winner is Fairy Star for Dramatic Pause. We held our breath, and the winner is Princess Perfecta. It was a long silence. See, see Perfecta smiling. The a cat's that's not the cream type of smile. Princess Perfecta, please read your winning wish to, winning wish out to the class. Fairy Tree said, handing Perfecta back her piece of paper. Perfecta stood up. A wish, not for a perfect face, but thoughtful heart and perf perfect grace. She said in a sing-song voice. Beside me, Alice gasped loudly. What is it? I whispered. It's a cheat. She hissed. Silence! Boomed Fairy Tree. But it was so odd. She gave Alice a sly little wink, and now she clasped the mist. Your wishes all be waiting for you in the great hall. Fairy Jean went on. She smiled a huge smile at Perfecta, and I'm sure we all wish you well. Princess Perfecta, do enjoy your wish, and do your ride in the seashell coach. We scrambled out of the classroom. We tried to hard walk. Properly, down the long corridor that led to the great hall, but at the same time, we're dying to get there as fast as we could. Were were there really be six silver ponies waiting for us? I couldn't wait. As we scolded along, Alice was possibly expo exploding with rage. Perfect, the so cheated. She said, "That's my sister's wish last year. Why on earth did a fairy do you say something?" I was remember fairy just a little wink. I think fairy is up to something. I said. Then we were then we were at the door of the great hall. It was amazing. Chapter four. You know when it's a sunny day, a little golden sparkles of dust float in the sunbeams. Well. The hall was full of sparkles, just like that, only much sparklier. Most of our classes were already there, and we could see princes spinning around and around in fantastic ball gowns, or dancing like ballerina, balla, ballerinas. Lisa and Gemma were singing like nightingales. Nancy was walking up and down on stilts. Freya was stroking a fluffy kitten. It was so incredible. I end up at the far, far, and Queen Gloriana was talking to Fairy G and some of the other teachers. Eglantine, Florian, and Perfecta were in the front of us, and each of them walked through the door. They changed. Eglantine softly had heaps and heaps of long golden curls, and Florine pushed her out of the way. I could see her eyes shining. The then Florine was in a most of sparkles, and woof! She was wearing the highest heel, highest high heeled shoes ever, and they were covered with glittering jewels, and she wanted. And she wasn't wobbling even the tiniest bit as she walked. Perfecta was next. She turned to look at us just before she walked in. As she said in her na nastiest voice, "Oh, it's the Rose Rose Rumors. If you're very lucky, might wave to from your seashell coach." Then she walked into the great hall, but nothing seemed to happen, except she made a funny, like a kind of O、oh、sound, and sat down hard on the floor. Alice, Charlotte, Sophia, Emily, Daisy, and I were too excited to take much notice. We took a deep breath and ran into the great hall together. Oof! Six gracious silver ponies were trotting round and round the hall. Shaking their silver manes and tails, and whining loudly. They were so beautiful, but Florine gave a massive search, 
and Lisa screamed. The ponies flung up their heads and began to gallop. Quick, as I said, they're scared. Poor things. We got to catch them, which was easier than going. Now I know. I'm sure you do too. That's the very worst day to try and catch a pony to rush around making lots of noise. We know it, but we but it looked as fabulously none of my classmates did. Fria, Fria whistled at them. Florine went on cheering. Gemma tried to rush them into the into a corner. And then Nancy fell off her sleds in a dreadful clatter and set and sent these poor, poor ponies into a perfect frenzy. They began to gallop this way and that, looking for a way out. But do you know? Do you know what? Even though they were horribly frightened, they were really careful to not crash into anyone. They swore this way and that, and sometimes they quartered on, on silver hoof, and they and their manes and tails steamed behind them. Stop this at once! Queen Gloriana was furious. Everyone froze, even the ponies. The whole great world as was as still as silent as we all been turned into stone. Who is re responsible for this ridiculous state of affairs? Our head teacher's voice was as cold as ice, and I felt totally terrible. I just wished, wished, uh, the wished the floor would open and swallow me. But I also knew I had to own up. My knees were like jelly as I croaked. It was me, Your Majesty, Princess Katie. I'm depletely disappointed in you, Queen Gloriana snapped, and her eyes were positively flashing. I hung my head. This is the most shocking. But she was interrupted. Princess Perfecta walked calmly up to our headmistress. Thanks, thank. Into a deep curtsy, and spoke in a in a grown up voice we'd never ever heard from you before. If you please, Your Majesty, the fault was not intentional. You believe Princess Katie mean meant no harm. Her wish were her wish was for good of the school, and if Your Majesty will be gracious enough to permit me, I will explain. Me. Chapter Five. I don't think I've ever been so surprised in my entire life. Alice grabbed my eye, arm. It's her wish, she said, and her eyes were sparkling. It come true. Perfecta went on, still in that strange grown up voice. Your Majesty must understand that we were each granted one wish. Princess Katie, having seen the wondrous beauty of a shiso coach, was concerned that she pebble pony for not perhaps the most perfect match, which this thought of mind and this and in a true hopes of doing good deed, Princess Katie put her down distress to one side and paused her dear friends to follow her noble example. And the result, as you can see, the six delightful silver ponies. There was a stunning silence, and then everyone began to talk at once. Queen Gloriana held up her hand. "Thank you, Princess Perfecta," she asked. She said, "I am set for for explanation." Princess Katie, you and your friends may take your points to the royal stable and. Pointing to the royal stable, and she actually smiled. You may look after them until the grand parade tomorrow. The shiso coach will be a neat, quiet, perfect. 
I had made my best currency ever. Thank you very much, Your Majesty, I said. And we were just moving towards the ponies. They were standing quite still, as good as gold, when Perfect made a seriously weird noise. It was kind of a strangled squeak, as if she was trying to stop herself.